In 2007, an Air Force crew at Minot Air Force Base in Minot, North Dakota, uh, was supposed to load missiles without the nuclear warheads on them onto a B-52 bomber so those missiles could be transferred down to Barksdale Air Force Base in Louisiana. The Minot crew did not follow the correct procedures for handling nuclear-capable missiles, and it turns out they loaded the wrong missiles onto that B-52. They accidentally loaded onto that plane six missiles with live nuclear warheads on them. The B-52 pilots, clueless about what they were carrying, flew down to Louisiana, they landed at Barksdale, and they left those six live nuclear-tipped missiles sitting unguarded on the tarmac in Louisiana for nine hours until somebody finally realized, oh my stars, these are not what we think they are. That debacle cost the Secretary of the Air Force and the Air Force Chief of Staff their jobs. Nuclear operations at Minot were suspended. Because, hey, it turns out temporarily misplacing live nuclear warheads is a fireable offense. That seems good. So Minot temporarily lost their right to safeguard our nuclear weapons. When Minot tried to earn it back, they failed. They failed their comeback inspection. They got an unsatisfactory rating, which is not surprising, considering the inspector's finding that, quote, security personnel could not even be bothered to stop playing video games on their cell phones during the inspection. A couple months later, a second Air Force base protecting nuclear weapons also failed its nuclear safety inspection. That happened five years ago. The Minot to Barksdale losing the nukes thing was bad enough. The aftermath was maybe even worse, since that incident did not seem to jolt the Air Force into any feeling of concern. Then Secretary of Defense Bob Gates was plainly and vocally horrified. He announced that taking care of and securing our aging and rather useless nuclear weapons, would henceforth become more of a priority. Inspections would be rigorous. Commanders would be held to account. The Obama administration would spend billions of dollars more on the nuclear weapons mission. Bob Gates essentially said, never again. This would never happen again. Well, fast forward to this year, 2013. President Obama's in his second term. Breaking Bad is over. Alec Baldwin is the newest MSNBC host. More than five years have passed since the terrifying, potentially world-ending oops at Minot Air Force Base, right? More than five years to fix what ails the security apparatus protecting our thousands of nuclear weapons. And, and in March of this year, Minot failed again. The nuclear missile wing earned three D grades. The commander there said the United States was suffering from a rot in the nuclear weapons handling force. 17 officers were taken off launch control duty at Minot. In June, the commander in charge of training the nuclear missile crews at Minot was relieved of his post. Thanks, sir. We'll take it from here. In August, it was another Air Force base that handles nuclear weapons at Malmstrom in Montana, which failed another nuclear surety inspection. That was their third inspection failure in the past five years. Then last week, the military's number two guy in charge of nuclear weapons got fired from his job after local police in Iowa found out that he was using counterfeit poker chips at an Indian casino. Now, after the number two guy in charge of our nuclear weapons for the United States military lost his job last week because of the counterfeit chips in the Indian casino thing, now, today, the number one guy in charge of nuclear weapons got fired too. And it was not for the same thing. We do not exactly know what his firing is about, but we do know what it's not about. NBC News has been told that his firing was not about sexual impropriety or drug use or criminal conduct of any kind or gambling. Whatever it is that caused him to be fired is said to be an incident of personal misbehavior that occurred several months ago. Beyond that, I cannot tell you because I don't know. But at this point, really, how are we supposed to feel? Are we supposed to feel good that the Air Force is watching over its commanders very closely and punishing bad behavior a lot whenever it happens? Or should we be terrified that so many people in high-ranking positions in charge of the most powerful weapons on Earth are failing inspections, losing weapons, committing crimes, and doing things we do not understand but that the military definitely thinks are fireable offenses? Should we be happy or should we be terrified? Is both an option? Joining us now for the interview tonight is Eric Schlosser. He's the award-winning investigative journalist who's author of the really excellent new book, Command and Control, Nuclear Weapons, the Damascus Accident, and the Illusion of Safety. Uh, Mr. Schlosser, thank you very much for being with us. I appreciate you being here. Thanks for having me. When most people think about nuclear weapons and handling them, we imagine a high-intensity workplace, highly skilled people doing a job with a lot of focus. What did you discover in the research for your book about the difference between the reality of that work and the image? 
You know, we go in phases in which there is very careful management of our arsenal, and then we go through phases in which it's much more lax. I mean, in my book, I write about the 1970s. There were real problems with illegal drug use among officers and enlisted men handling, handling nuclear weapons. There were people smoking pot in launch control centers, people who were using LSD and also had responsibility for nuclear weapons. So this isn't a new problem, uh, and things got better. But certainly in the last 15 years or so, the Air Force seems to have lost the plot when it comes to the management of its arsenal. And there are clearly serious morale problems, but most important, uh, problems with the management at the top. You write somewhat surprisingly. I I've been fascinated with nuclear weapons and with uh, mishaps involving nuclear weapons for a long time. So your book is fascinating to me and also, I think, a real treasure in terms of just deep research on this. One of the things that I did not expect to find at all was your relative praise for the Navy over the Air Force. You essentially say that the Navy's been better at dealing with nuclear weapons handling than the Air Force has. Why is that? Well, right now, most people don't realize the Navy has more nuclear warheads uh, than the Air Force. They're on submarines, and there may be problems, but we just haven't heard about them. But the culture of the Navy started with uh, Hyman Rickover, the father of the nuclear submarines. And for some reason, the Air Force and its culture seems to have just gone off the rails. They had a much more gung-ho culture during the Cold War. And uh, now that there doesn't seem to be a point to these land-based missiles, there seem to be morale problems. These land-based missiles are really only useful for attacking Russia or China. And uh, the head of the Global Strike Command, the, the Air Force uh, officer in charge of all of their nuclear weapons, said recently that there was a very remote possibility of Russia attacking us and our having to use those missiles. He said the greatest concern he had was of an accident. And I think he's right. Uh, these are the most dangerous weapons, as well as the most powerful weapons we've ever built. And if we're going to have them, we need to spare no expense in how we manage them. In terms of the way that we have dealt with, with problems, we've seen Secretary of the Air Force fired, Air Force Chief of Staff fired, multiple command level officers fired, 17 launch control officers suspended all at once, whole bases publicly shamed and stripped of their nuclear responsibilities. That's before these last two commanders were just fired within the space of the week. The, even with all yeah. of that accountability, the, the hits keep coming. Why isn't that kind of negative reinforcement bringing about any change? Well, I'm hoping that this publicity will lead to a real debate. We need a national debate over our nuclear weapons. Yeah. How many should we have? Why do we need them? How should they be deployed? All of our weapon systems are aging. Uh, our missiles, the land-based missiles, were supposed to be taken off duty in the 1980s. Uh, they're still on duty. Our submarines are getting older. The B-52 bomber, which is our principal nuclear uh, bomber, hasn't been built since the Kennedy administration. So I'm hoping that we'll have a real national debate about why we have these weapons, how many we need, how they should be deployed. And part of that will be to ensure the people who manage them have the best training, the best morale, are compensated. I think they have the most important job in our military, which is safeguarding the most powerful weapons. Eric Schlosser, investigative journalist and author of the new book, Command and Control, Nuclear Weapons, the Damascus Accident and the Illusion of Safety. Uh, Eric, I wrote about this topic a, a very little bit at the end of the book that I published last year. I read your book. Oh, thank you. Well, I, um, I'm... You were right. You were right on the mark. <laughs> well, the Damascus Accident and the socket wrench setting off the, ac the, the Damascus Accident, that's the central narrative point of your book, uh, is so mind-bending. And I knew it already, but reading it in the way you've put it, it's just, it's a real treasure. So thank you for doing this. It's really important work. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank All you. Right. Okay.